I fire Howie. Fucking fire the motherfucker! Stupid motherfucker! What an idiot! What an idiot! Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So, we are here. It is now Southern Death. Southern. Sudden death. I don't know why I'm saying southern death. It is sudden death. It is the playoffs. There is no tomorrow. You must win. And the Dallas Cowboys are getting ready for one of their nemesis, the Green Bay Packers, without at least Aaron frickin' Rodgers. And getting ready for this game, what I want you to understand is there's no such thing as being healthy as much as it is just being able to perform it's really less hurt and the cowboys well we've actually got pretty good news as far as the um medical malfunctions shout out to greg evans um we are for the most part i mean it, it was terrible losing Diggs this season it was terrible losing leighton van Der Esch. those are things that definitely hurt our team um losing both of those guys for the year and possibly Leighton Van Der Esch for his career. Um, but going into the game, we've had players and our offensive line has been a mismatch. You know, we don't have that offensive line like we had in, say, 2016, 2015, 14. Um, our offensive line has been in transition. But I will say, shout out to NFLPA, who put four Cowboys as all pros. Unfortunately, not a single one of them are Dak Prescott, or Micah Parsons. They have Tyler Smith, all-pro guard, second team. Zach Martin, first team, all-pro. Um, Deron Bland, I think second team, all-pro. And Aubrey, our kicker. No Dak, no Micah. Um, but, you know, we've had Tyler Smith has missed the last couple of games because of uh, getting the uh, uh, plantar fasciitis, complete tear. We've had Tyron Smith in and out of the locker lineup, although he has been back the last two weeks and has played outstanding. And going into playoffs and having a healthy Tyron Smith is huge. Um, Tyron Smith is not the player that he was several years ago, but when he's out there, he's still one of the best left tackles in football. And the Cowboys have managed him much better this year than they had in past years. The fact that we're going into playoffs with him is huge. On Tyler Smith, Jerry Jones, you know, saying on uh, the fan yesterday that he's optimistic about Smith playing on Sunday. He was limited in practice, okay, but he was in practice yesterday. Uh, today is the big practice day for the team. Uh, Friday's pack practice is a recovery. Saturday's a walkthrough game on Sunday. And let me say, really, at this time of year, it's not like when Jimmy Johnson was the coach of the Cowboys where they were actually in full pads and hitting the week of the Super Bowl. There are no more padded practices uh, in, after week 11. They're just not. Um, they're basically jogging through, and it's just basically about trying to maintain the player's health. Going through the whole uh, injury situation, excuse me, medical malfunction situation, they rested Stefan Gilmore, who looks like he's going to be playing. You know, he popped his shoulder out and they popped it back in. You know, now it's a matter of just getting the pain under control. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence got a rest day yesterday. Zach Martin got rest. Tyron Smith got rest. So, you know, all the big guys, we they know what they need to do. We just need you to be, you know, ready to go on Sunday. Uh, Brandon Cooks got rest. Hankins, 
um, got rest as well as Jordan Lewis. So everybody basically got rest. You don't have anybody that you say is questionable or out and stuff right now. The only one may be, may be Tyler Smith if he's going to be ready to go. So for the Cowboys, we're as healthy as we've been. And you couldn't ask for anything more going into the playoffs. Now, I want to deal with, you know, to me, this whole FedEx Air player of the week thing really bothers me because to have Dak on there who had more touchdown passes this week, who's got more touchdown passes this year than anyone to have him on the list and then take him off and put on um, Josh Allen and listening to the talking heads that now all of a sudden there's like a reinvention of Josh Allen where we're just going to ignore all the turnovers that he had, you know, Oh man, you know, he was great. Uh, 359 yards with the two TD passes, even though one bounced off the head of a defender and ended up coming down in the hands of the receiver. But they ignore the interceptions that he does, the turnovers, the, the twice what Dak Prescott had this year and more than Dak Prescott had last year. Dak Prescott was winning games, won more games last year than what Josh Allen did this year. But because of the turnovers, they couldn't consider him for player of the year. They they just wouldn't do that. So this is where you look at this and say, this is some bullshit. But what I hope is that the Cowboys take this and use it as motivation of showing, showing everybody how valuable Micah Parsons is to this team and how much of a game changer, how valuable Dak Prescott is. But it's a misnomer about Dak Prescott being this playoff choker. Um, When you go off of Dak Prescott's playoffs, in his six games, he's got 1,559 yards and 11 TDs with only five interceptions. Five, you know, that's two TDs and one interception per game on average. Not the earth-shattering, like, He turns the ball over like Josh Allen does in the the playoffs. And beyond the playoffs, unfortunately, you have to look at the whole team. The thing that has been missing for the Cowboys so much in the playoffs in recent history is a running game. We have not been able to run the football. And every one of those playoff losses, there has not been a 100-yard game by the offense running the football. And we've had collapses by the defense as well. And I'm not saying that Dak Prescott is not, doesn't have any blame, but we need to go ahead and stop saying that Dak Prescott fails in the playoffs. It's the Dallas Cowboys have failed. Now, they are primed much better to be in a great position to do things. And I will dare say that one of the reasons why I feel much better going into this playoff situation is where we are with our tight ends. When you look across the NFL – The teams that are winning the most, the teams that are in the Super Bowls and things, probably for about the last 12 years or so since Hernandez and Gronk were there together in New England. You look at, you know, the the Gronks. You look at the George Kittles. You look at the Dallas Goddards. You look at um, uh, Kelsey. All the teams that are great teams have a great tight end, not just a you know a, a four five hundred yard guy. We have a guy who becomes a dy- a dynamic pass catcher as well as a great blocker. And when you have that on your team, you'll notice that the best teams have a great tight end. And we have not had that since Jason Witten was younger. And this is where Jake Ferguson is going to be key for this Dallas Cowboys. I want to actually, he kind of throws shade at the Packers. And I want you to check this out. I want you to listen to him yesterday in the locker room. Nothing. I was a Wisconsin fan. Um, You know, I only only watch Wisconsin football. Um, I think some other big thing, I guess you could say, I didn't like him, but one of the main reasons I didn't like him because the Wisconsin Badgers lost and the Packers won, and it made the Badgers look bad. So, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Wisconsin Badger fan. I got nothing for the Packers. Raiders? Ra- I grew up a Raiders fan. Um, yeah. 
What about family? Do you have Packers fans in the house? No. No? Nope. Same. I mean, same goes with them. My grandma always said, the Packers win and the Badgers lose. It makes them look bad. So, Jake, when last year ended in, in San Francisco, how did you think about getting back to this, this moment, this opportunity? I think uh, it first started with the offseason. Um, just thought about all the work that needs to go back in to, um, you know, get to that spot, get to that point, get to that spot, and ultimately take advantage of it. And, you know, um, but I think it goes down to, it's just this week, it's this one game first. Um, starts with this prep that we're starting with now. Mm -hmm. Is there an element of that hurt, that pain that you do hold on to continuously to get back to this point, or is that just all in the past? Yeah, I, I mean, you can. Um, it's always nice, or not nice, but it's always important to remember that, that feeling. Um, but I also think it's kind of important to, you know, hey, this is a new year, this is a this is a new mentality. This is this is how we're coming. I prepared all off season for this, all year for this. Mm -hmm. um, you just got to take advantage of it, and you got to execute on everything you're doing. What is what is the experience of last year do for you? Um, I could say it drives me. Um, you know, I could say looking back on it, it sucked, and I don't ever want to be in that position again. Um, at the end of the day, there's only one team who wins this thing, and to be on the other side, I haven't felt. I don't know what that's like, but I know it's going to take a lot of work. I know it's going to take dedication through everything I'm doing on the field, off the field, um, the choices I make, what I put in my body. Um, it's, it's all the little details. That's what's going to get us to that spot. How about from a comfort level? Do you feel like you're going to be more comfortable just knowing going through two games last year? Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I think I put myself in some uncomfortable spots this this off season. You know, um, not only in my preparation, but with whatever I'm doing. Um, I think something important that we always talk about is you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So you know what, no matter gets, what what gets thrown at us, we got to be prepared. We got to be, gotta be on our P's and Q's. We got to trust in our scheme. We trust in our training. And at the end of the day, you know, just go out there and execute. What do you remember about just that first playoff game? What you do learn or, or get to appreciate about how how it is different? You know, first experience of that. It's a different style of football. You know. Uh, the guys across from you are essentially trying to take food off your table. You know what I mean? This is this is one and done. This is every play matters. Every little detail matters. Where I put my hands on a block matters. Um, it's it's you know it's it's amped up that much more. So I think um, just getting that emphasis out there. The guys in this team know. The guys in this locker room know. Um, I mean the rookies even know. They get a better understanding just by the way the vets you know handle themselves around this week. And. Um, yeah, it's just it's just going out there and executing, kicking ass. There you go. Executing and kicking ass. Yeah, that's nice. It is definitely nice. Um, I think Cowboys Nation, with the way they respond, the way they uh, they support us, you know, in AT and T. I mean, there's that's still the greatest stadium I've played in. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm just excited. Ton of energy. Um, you know, every little play, every every something, third down is is big. And um, I mean, it, it's booming in there. It's loud. I'm, gl I'm glad they're on our side. Do you, do you feel like you Last relish question, big moments? And what is it about them that kind of gets that out of you? Um, you know, there's the saying, big players make big plays and big moments. And I think, um, you know, looking at that, but also looking at just trusting your training and trusting how you approach it. Um, you know, if I go through this week and I'm, you know, slacking or I'm not running around in practice or I'm, I'm walking a lot in practice, you know, I might go into that game and I might have a couple doubts or I might be thinking, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for this. But, you know, if I attack this week, running around, flying around, everything I'm doing, um, if I do make a mistake in this week, I'm going back, I'm correcting it two, three times. You know, I'm walking into my room, I'm eating clean, I'm doing all the right things, watching film. Um, then I get to that game day and I'm like, all right, I did all the right things. It's time to just go play football. And that's where Jake Ferguson it's has... Excitement life. I mean, it ain't much excitement, just for me, at least, you know, uh, stay that was Jerron Bland. And that's where Jake Ferguson has been coming around really, really well for us and has become a favorite target of Dak Prescott's. You can see him going down the seams. He looks like a wide receiver. He is really good at blocking. And I hope one of the problems we've had in past playoffs is we've gotten away from using 12 personnel. And that's where you've got to use guys like Jake Ferguson's. Um, where that's where we've been lacking where last year it ended up being that once Tony Pollard went down, it was just the CD lamp show. Um, and I just wondered what happened to 12 personnel and hopefully we'll start seeing some of that and we'll see plays being made by Jake Ferguson, because that's what we're going to need if we're going to 
uh, get to a Super Bowl. All right, good people. As always, I appreciate you guys. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, I'm going to get my day started here, get some more coffee, and do some work here at the Red Brick House and follow along with what's going to happen in practice. By the way, King Dick back here. And so before we start this video, I got to get this mother humping thing out of the way. <laughs> 